Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Playtech TV. My name is Kevin and today we're doing the six things you should know about Intel Skylake. Now we're going to be focusing on these two CPUs today. So this is the uh, i5-6600K and this is the i7-6700K. So let's just give you a brief overview of these two CPUs. So the 6600K, the i5, is a 14 nanometer quad core without hyperthreading, 3.5 gigahertz base clock and a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz, and it features a 91 watt TDP. Now the 6700K on the other hand, the uh, i7, is still a 14 nanometer CPU, still a quad core, but it does feature hyperthreading. Base clock speed of 4 GHz with a boost clock of 4.2 and it also features a 91 watt TDP. Thing you need to know, number one, that's my epic voice if you're wondering, um, is that these are on a new socket. Okay, so uh, this is LGA 1151. Now, I'll never fear with people freaking out because uh, coolers that are compatible with 1150, 1155, all the other carry on, uh, will be compatible with socket 1151. So, uh, all your coolers that you might already have, whatever you might have, you know, an H110 or, or whatever it might be, uh, will be compatible with this new socket. So, you won't have to rush out and get a new cooler. However, this also means you'll need a new motherboard as a uh, socket 1150 motherboards will not work. So your Z97s are not going to be working with these guys. So you will need to go out and get a Z170 motherboard like this uh, Asus Z170 Deluxe right here. Excellent motherboard. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so you will need to go out and get one of those if you're wanting to uh, over, uh, overclock these processors, which you will because these are the K variants, which means they're unlocked and you can overclock them if you want. And we will be doing a full uh, sort of motherboard overview video and that'll be coming up in the next video after this one. Number two, that's my super cool mode. Uh, you're going to be requiring new memory as well. So the vast majority of these uh, Z170 MOBOs will be requiring DDR4 memory. Although some may uh, be able to use DDR3L, which is the low voltage DDR3. Uh, this isn't the end of the world though. Uh, we've done a, a big video of DDR3 versus DDR4 before. So click this uh, G skill memory. If you want to go watch that video, go on, click it, click it. Okay, uh, and that just basically explains the differences between them, so we won't run over it uh, too much in this video. However, uh, DDR4 pricing has gotten a lot better now, so that's not the end of the world. It used to be very expensive, now it's come down a lot, uh, so that's really good, so you, you don't have to fear on that side of things either. And uh, XMP 2.0 is now also supported, so that's going to be a big thing for some of you out there that are wanting to uh, take your memory to the max. Number three. The integrated graphics now on these new Skylake uh, CPUs is just miles above what you got with Haswell. So it is a really big step up with Intel HD 530 integrated graphics. Now this is also because the integrated graphics are going to take full advantage of the uh, highest speeds that you get out of DDR4 as as well as all the other upgrades you get uh, with DDR4. So that's really good. However, the one thing you do need to consider with these new uh, CPUs is that they do not come with a stock cooler, as you can see. You know, the boxes are quite thin now. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to go out and get a uh, cooler of some sort for them. It's kind of like what was happening before, well, like with uh, Haswell E and all that, uh, they would never come with coolers because obviously if you're buying a CPU that expensive, uh, you would buy your own cooler and neither of these guys. So I go out there and get a good cooler for yourself. Uh, personally, if you're just out there looking for a random cooler, a really good all-in-one liquid cooler that is, uh, this uh, Kraken X41 is an absolutely excellent 140 mil all-in-one. So this is something to consider. But you could also get, uh, you know, any of the air coolers out there. You know, you can get an entry-level air cooler if you wanted, if you just wanted something to get you by, if you weren't going to be overclocking these CBOs. And then you can go absolutely crazy and get big, you know, 240 mil, 280 millimeter, 360 millimeter rads if you're wanting to just overclock these guys to the moon and back. Number four! I can't believe my voice goes that high. Wow. Okay, so um, these new Skylake CPUs feature the same great 
polymer thermal interface material we saw on Devil's Canyon. So if you uh, remember back when Haswell first launched, particularly the 4770K was running really, really hot. And then when they released Devil's Canyon, the 4790K, they upgraded the uh, thermal interface material and it made a big difference there. And I was seeing the same thermal interface material on these new Skylake CPUs. So that's really good. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is lower temperatures down. This is mainly going to be a big benefit for overclockers out there. It will just give you more thermal headroom to, you know, be able to overclock a bit further so that's really the main advantage but you know lower temperatures are always a good thing even to, for those people out there that aren't going to be overclocking number five oh i'm gonna lose my voice at this rate all right let's carry on so the fully integrated voltage regulator is no longer on the die as we saw with haswell cpus so this has been moved back to the motherboard we can open this up there we go you can see the motherboard in there so this is kind of like how it used to be back in the day so that's uh, always a good thing uh, this just means that uh, it'll help keep the cpu temperatures down which is always nice as we know and it also will mean that getting a bit of better motherboard will have even more impact on how good of an overclock you get with your skylake cpu so you're definitely want, gonna be wanting uh, if you're gonna be overclocking these guys to get a really good motherboard if you can afford it because it's gonna make quite a bit of difference when it comes to overclocking these processes. Number six, price-wise, these guys, the 6700K and 6600K, are coming in at pretty much the same price as what Devil's Canyon was selling at. So that's quite good, depending on when you're watching this video, that is. So I really like that. Uh, it'll also be quite future-proof by the fact that it uses a DDR4 memory, so I like that too. And this is a worthwhile upgrade, in particular if you're upgrading from uh, an older Intel setup, so like a Sandy Bridge or a Ivy Bridge, I think it'd be a really good step up, not only stepping up to DDR4, but also the CPUs themselves would be quite a good setup. Uh, step up, I should say. But I think the main benefit is the uh, chipset benefits of upgrading to Z170, which we will be discussing more in the next video. However, we are also going to be doing a Skylake performance and uh, overclocking guide so that will be coming up sometime in the future. So uh, like the video and subscribe to Playtech TV uh, if you're keen to see that video. And I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.